Alright, welcome back everyone. This video is going to be about me repairing the Protec 35. Obviously over the last few months I've spent a lot of time flying and a lot of time crashing as well. And it was always going to be inevitable with this bind and fly that it was going to crash it to the point where it was going to need to have some pretty major repairs. So I thought I'd tell that story. Um, I want to warn you the video is quite long and there might be parts that are boring but uh, I've been getting feedback. It's those little bits of information that are helpful for some people. So I'm just going to get it out there and put it all on the table for you. So again, um, thanks for your patience and thanks for watching. So um, as you guys know, over the last few months, I have crashed this drone a lot of times. And most of the times the crashes have been really minor and all I've had to do is tape it back up or glue it back together or you know, change a frame or something simple like that. But um, on my recent flight, um, which was inside, which is a little bit silly with this drone, it was a bit too big. Um, I crashed it and um, I didn't realize that I'd cracked the frame and I tried to take off again um, and uh, full throttled up and burnt out uh, motor number one, which is the rear left, or sorry, rear right hand motor. And basically uh, that one isn't available, these motors aren't available anymore. So I've had to buy the newer upgraded version of these motors. So I have to replace all four of these motors uh, in order to get it airborne again. So um, once I learned that I needed to do some soldering, I went through and bought some uh, practice solder boards so that I could, um, you know, just hone my skills. I hadn't done much soldering in the last you know, few decades. Um, so I did a bit of practice and just got myself confident with that again uh, before attacking this intricate circuitry. Um, so now I feel like I'm ready to do that. So tonight I'm going to give that a go uh, and try and get this uh, flying again. I have a bit of an idea of how I'm going to approach it and just do one motor at a time and then just work at one wire at a time after that. So um, I don't know how it'll go. I'll obviously report back over at the end and, and let you guys know anything that I, that I ran into, any problems that I, I ran into or, or things that I can suggest to make it easier for you. All right, so the first thing I need to do is disconnect this motor from the flight computer. Uh, this is an all-in-one flight computer, so it's very tight and intricate. Um, so I'm basically just going to take my time and desolder that um, so I can remove that motor. And I'll just start with that broken one first in here. Um, so yeah, hopefully I don't cook it in that first go, but I won't really know until I've done all four anyway. So um, I'll just have at it and let you guys know. Taking my time. Obviously it just takes a while to heat up this solder. Oh, there we go, we've got a bit of a liquid. Oh, didn't come away. Got the solder that did a good job of this one. You know what I might do? I might get some tweezers for this. Might make that a bit easier. There we go. That was the ticket. Still got some solder on there. And then just rinse and repeat that a few more times. Oh, try not to hit those other critical components. Again, that one's taken me some time. It's a much more tiny than I thought. We don't need to push as hard. This doesn't feel like it's getting to temperature, this one. It seems to be coming away, but it doesn't seem to be liquefying like it should. Hey, she's come away. So that's two of the three. One more. Hopefully that's been heated up by the other one, maybe. There's just some excess solder there, so I'm going to try and suck that out with this thing. Seem to work. Just got to be patient with uh, heating up. It just takes a while sometimes. There we go. There we go. All right, so we got all three out of there now. Seems like we've done pretty minimal damage. I'll have to do some closer inspection um, and let you know how that went. All right, so now that I've freed the motor from the flight computer, I just need to now unbolt that from the frame. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. Um, should be pretty easy. So that's just four M3 screws or whatever they are. They're a little bit different to the rest of the, the ones that I've used for the frame. So that's an interesting part. All right, so that was one of the interesting parts. So obviously those 3D printed skid pads, they just um, pop off as well. 
So that's interesting. So now that motor's nice and free, I can just yank that out of that sleeve. Now I'll just have to feed the new one through there too, before giving that a, a red hot go. That camera's just flying on around, that should be fine though. Alright, so that's the busted motor. Alright, now that I have the motor off, you can really see um, in close on that solder and how small it is. Uh, let's get some focus. There we go. I think that should be good. There we go. Alright, so, yeah, so I'm going to need to clean up that solder. You can see the one on the right and the one in the middle um, are a bit close, so I'm just going to tidy them up by just getting the solder in there and just fiddling around a little bit. So I'll make sure this is nice and clean before getting in there. Try to clean it up. Okay, it took me a while, but um, I was able to clean up those terminals as best as I think I can do for now anyway. Um, just being careful not to make them join each other, so. Now I'll attach the motor and try and solder the motor to the, the computer and see how that goes because that's going to be the hardest part. Alright, so yeah, now time to attach the motor. Um, so that's the broken one, the burnt out one. And these will be the new ones here. I'll probably use the screws that came with this just to make sure that the, the other ones aren't too long. Unless the other ones look the same and then I'll probably just use them. So with this part, I have to feed the, the cable through this sleeve first up. Uh, I'm going to try and do all three together first. Right, so there, they're, they're in position now. And now I just have to bolt that motor in. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm um, just going to have a look at these screws that came with it and if they're the same size I'll just use the old ones but so now that the motor's on I need to connect the wires and trim them down to fit to the uh, flight computer um, that'll be the most intricate difficult part so um, I'm just going to get onto that now and uh, I'm just going to report back after that too because yeah it might just take a while so after trimming up the wires, I just set them in position as they were originally placed and then I just used the technique of going from the most difficult to access joint first and then just working backwards from there through that and I just rinsed and repeated that on all four motors and that's where I'll pick up the video. Alright, welcome back. Um, it's been about a week since I started to replace the motors on this here Protec 35. It takes about 45 minutes per motor. Um, to desolder it, prepare it and resolder it back onto the board. Uh, the circuitry on this board is a lot more intricate than it is on the, the practice board that I had, so I really had to take my time. And I still haven't done a particularly good job. It kind of looks like Stevie Wonder did it, um, but it'll do for now, I think. I'll plug a battery in and cross fingers, it won't catch fire. Um, that'll be the first time to move forward and then plug it into a computer maybe um, uh, to get it all reconfigured. So. Um, I'll do that and see how we go. So I've got a just a spare computer here. I don't want to plug it into a um, proper computer because God knows what this is going to do once I give it a lipo. Um, so this is just a leftover computer that we've got lying around with Betaflight loaded on it. Um, so what I'll do first of all is just put a battery in and just, yeah, hopefully it doesn't catch fire. Um, and if that works, then... I'll uh, plug in Betaflight and go from there. Um, before I do that though, I might just plug in a mouse because this trackpad doesn't work. Cross fingers, no fire. Alright, that's good. 
So the one thing I just want to check for here quickly is um, the motors warming up. Now motor three, when I even before I had changed any of the motors from the old ones, was getting really hot just randomly. So um, I just want to keep an eye on that. It does feel like it's getting warmer than the other ones already. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. And obviously I can't leave the battery plugged in too long or I'll cook this video VTX unit too. So um, that's good. I'm just going to turn this on quickly to see that bind straight away. So that's good. So I don't need to worry about that too much. It's still connected. Um, so I'll leave that on for now until I unplug this. Um, but for now that looks pretty good. We're not getting too much smoke or any smoke at the moment. I did get a little waft but that was gone pretty quickly. I don't know what that was from. But now that that's on, let's just plug it into beta flight and see if we get a connection. Because that'll tell me if I've fried the board or not. Let's turn that the right way around, might help. Hey, and we have action. Look at that, that's awesome. So beta flight has action. Now, let's just quickly check motors and check that and they all seem to work, which is good. I'll take that as a win for now. Now I don't actually know how to assign these to different directions. Um, so I'm just going to go study that and come back and do that. But for now, I'll just turn it all off. All right, as you can see, it's another new day. Uh, last night when I went looking and researching on how to change the direction of the motors, I couldn't really find a video that was succinct enough to tell me exactly what to do. Uh, from what I can tell, I might need to get into the CLI section on the beta flight, which I've never played with before. Um, but at the moment, um, I don't really know exactly what's going on. After playing around a little bit, uh, motor number four isn't responding 100%. It's, it's heating up more than the other um, three motors. So I gotta keep an eye on that. And that was happening before I changed the motors uh, with the old ones as well. So I don't know if the original crash when I um, burnt out motor number one, if whether or not I jeopardized motor number four in the same process. So um, I don't really know how to diagnose that. I basically just have to fiddle around and figure it out. They wouldn't have to fucking sit here and watch you fumble around and fuck it up. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do for now is just get the motors turning in the right direction um, and take it for a fly and see if it all works that way. Um, if this motor's not responding 100%, I'm sure I'll figure it out at that point. Um, and if I have to replace the, the um, flight computer, the Beast flight computer, I've got one of them on order as well. So. Um, yeah, we'll just play it by ear. All right, so let's get this turned on. Hopefully we don't get any fire. Plug this in as quick as I can. Oop, have got a bit of smoke there, but don't know what that's from. Um, okay, so that's in there. That's good. So we're gonna go to the motors. We're gonna say that we understand what we're doing. And motor number one, so I've got this piece of wood here to just um, put into the motor as it spins just to see which way it's going. Looks like this one to me is spinning anti-clockwise. So I'm just going to write that down on my little pad here. Motor one is going that way. Motor two is going that way. Motor three is going this way. And motor four, if it's working, yeah, see, that's not working the same way. And then it resets. And it's fine now. That one's gone that way. So it appears that for all intensive purposes, 
I don't actually need to change the direction. So maybe that's why I've had the issues. So um, having a look there, four and one are going the same way, two and three are going the same way. It is in the reverse option there, but maybe that's okay. Um, so unplug that. Interesting, interesting. Um, so maybe what I should do then from here is just test if the controller connects and responds and if the goggles connect and I can see. Because if that works, then I can just put it back together and go for a fly. All right, so it's another day and I've had to go away and come back a few times because uh, every time I sort of create a theory about what's going on, I need to research it and actually just check out if that's true. So um, basically what I've done is I've done a motor check to check the directions, but I have sort of observed that uh, motor number four is sort of acting erratically. And the problem is it was doing that a little bit before I changed the motors. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the flight computer um, all in one system. So I need to basically, well, I needed to go back and do some research on that before going any further. And the best thing that I can find for now to find out how bad it is, is I'm just going to see if um, when I put a battery in and connect the controller, whether or not I can arm and throttle up the motors and they respond sort of as they should without the propellers on or any of the frame. Um, because if it acts the way I think it will and it sort of just fidgets and doesn't spin properly, I know there's no point rebuilding it as it is. So I'll need to uh, relook at what's going on with the, the flight computer and um, proceed further with that. So um, at the moment, what I'm gonna do is just, like I said, turn on the controller, turn on the drone and see if it throttles up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now this shouldn't take but a second. All I need to really do is uh, plug in this battery and turn on the controller, but I'm gonna do it the other way around. Turn on the controller first. Uh, so. I'm pretty sure it's still bound to this at the moment. Um, we'll find out and turn that on. Welcome to Tango 2. All right, and I don't want to have the drone on for too long, so I'll plug that in. I don't obviously need the computer right now. So I'll plug that in. Hopefully again, it doesn't catch fire. So um, everything seems to be quite normal there. Protec 35, um, all right. I'll just wait a second just to be sure to be sure that that's all good. All right. You might not be able to see, but yeah, just as I expected, motor four isn't spinning properly. So um, that's definitely compromised. It's fidgeting like I thought. So the good news is that it, most of them worked, but the bad news is that you need all of them to work. Um, so I'm pretty much back to the drawing board with that. I can desolder this and then resolder that to it and see if that fixes it. Um, I have a feeling that the, the soldering is pretty good. And like I said, it was doing that before. The reason I was replacing the motors was because of motor one, and that seems to be working fine now. Um, so there is progression there, but um, it does seem that motor number four is compromised still. So kind of back to the drawing board with that. So I might um, leave it at that for now because um, I'll just keep fiddling until I've come up with a solution and let you know what I come up with. It's a little bit disappointing, um, but the story continues. Whilst it's really disappointing, I haven't been able to successfully fix the Protect 35. Um, my FPV story can't finish there and I'm really excited to keep flying. So I've gone and made a purchase of something a bit smaller 
something that should help me fly through the indoor spaces and confined areas a little bit more easily. This is my new friend, the iFlight Protect 25 pusher frame with the digital VTX. Um, this is going to be my next victim for the next few months, I think. And I'm really excited to see what small spaces we can fit through with this little guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs>